It's Wednesday, August the 16th, and you're tuned in to the TNIB Podcast. I'm Vince. I'm Anthony. And this is the Geek Chic Culture Show, where we talk about all the cool things in the whole wide freaking world. Summer is coming to an end. I don't know, man. It's still really hot. <laughs> it is, but I can tell it's coming to an end because the days are getting darker sooner. Yeah, true. Like, night is... It is becoming black before nine outside. Mm-hmm. And that kind of makes me sad. No, man, that's that's where it's at. That's nah, what nah, dark nah. at five o'clock. Oh. That's my life. Wait, you really like that? I do. I really do like that. I like it when it gets dark at like five o'clock. Oh, like I like going into work and it's barely sunrise, yeah. and I like coming out of work and it's nighttime. So you don't like seeing the, like the day? No. What? <laughs> man, that's <laughs> gonna affect your your mental state at some point. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Maybe if I got more sun. Yeah, they say they say more sun makes you a happier person. But listen. And it brings about positivity and eagerness and all the good stuff that, how, that how employers gonna, are looking for. How am I going to be an edge lord <laughs> if, <I'm, laughs> if I get sunlight? It's very true. Right? Also, I got those vitamin D supplements. It's basically the sun. Oh, no. <laughs> no, they say just seeing the sun helps you. Out. I guess. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's pretty bummer. Uh, so since we're almost at the end of the summer, I had a question to ask you. Okay. What do you think is the hottest, su- what, what is 2017's hottest summer jam? I have not been listening to summer jams this year, so I actually do not know. You got nothing? You I got, got nothing. Like, nothing. I'm sure there's a Justin Bieber song in there somewhere. Uh, well, we listen to that one song. Uh, song. that was it. You're like you dance like a stripper, but you're my ballerina. Oh, yeah, or that's something that's like that. not a summer. Is that jam. not a summer jam? I don't know. It's a jam, and it's in the summer. Uh, okay. I'm trying to think of like hot radio songs. So but... I I have one that right. I think is the best summer jam. It's and you're right. It is a Justin Bieber song. Oh, okay. It's that Spanish one, Despacito. Sure. That's it. There you go. <laughs> so out of touch with like popular music this year, it's insane. I've been catching up on a lot of jazz, and I just recently got into Barry White. So I've been listening to a lot of Barry White. What? <laughs> There's one song though that I was listening to that I really liked, but I just didn't know what was, it was. You sure it's not the strippers and ballerinas song? I'm sure. Be positive. I'm pretty sh- okay. sure. When did that song about that girl getting a mattress come out? That was last year. That was last year. Okay. Yeah. That, that was last year. That song sucks. What? That song sucks. It's your favorite. It's a bad song. Who's it by? I don't remember. Oh. They went to Colorado. Yeah. And they had a mattress and a truck or something. God, I don't know. I don't know. That I don't know. Sucks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's basically all I got. <laughs> I'm sorry I couldn't deliver on the summer jam hotness. Yeah, I know. I thought you were gonna hit me with some. If you want, like my actual, like my summer, I don't think it's popular enough to be like mainstream stuff. If it ain't passion fruit, don't bother. If it ain't passion, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say the the new Brockhampton album is is a lot of summer jams going on. Brockhampton's a rap group uh, coming out of America. And they got a song called Star that's really good. They just brought out a new song called Gummy that's very good. Uh, Heat is a very angry rap song. Uh, those are those are kind of my summer jams. I've just listening to that album over and over again. Okay, sure. If you want, if you want those hipster picks, yeah, Anthony's got your back. Um, I got that, and that's not what I was looking for. All but, right, but then. but uh, thanks for your input. No problem. Thanks for trying. Brockhampton they released so they released their album uh saturation in june Mm -hmm. and they are scheduled for a second album uh before the end of the year (laughs) wow yeah they're just pumping out music wow uh speaking of music we looked up tickets to go see the new tae yang tour yang for all you who don't know who tae yang is he is uh korea's number one solo male artist yeah he's man he's out of control his videos are out of control (laughs) yeah he's the best yeah they're pretty great uh, they're too expensive. Yes. It looks like the barrier to entry so that we can view him with... We can view him on a Jumbotron. Yes. Is uh, too much for us. Yeah. It's a, it's, a little, it's a little pricier than I was expecting. It's 140 149 Dang. $150. Dang. Mm-hmm. If we want moderate seats, 200 And if we want that platinum experience... 
the thing, 350. See, the thing is, is like at at 200. Yeah. Just spend the extra fifty dollars. Like the nosebleed is yeah. one fifty. Like you that's might what they, as that's well. how they get you, right? Yeah. Like you might as well. Man, <laughs> that would have been fun. Yeah, my one friend went to go see Shiny in Toronto. Oh, how uh, much is that? He paid two hundred and two hundred fifty dollars for tickets. <laughs> oh, wow, <laughs> that was a really good spit take. Wow, that was good timing on my part. Wow. Yeah, he spent two hundred and fifty dollars on tickets. Him and his sister. That's to go see K-pop. Too much. Yeah, it's yeah. I spent fifty dollars to go see J-pop. Ooh. That was pretty fun. I guess music's. Man, you thought toys were expensive. No, oh, I know music's expensive. <laughs> that's why. That's why artists don't make money. Yeah. <laughs> uh. But anyways, uh, enough about the music. Let's talk about things that that matter. Like picks? Yeah. Like weeks? Yeah. Like all the cool things in the world? Sure. Okay. And that isn't apparently music. <laughs> so, uh, nothing on my end except for the Overwatch Minute. Mm-hmm. They added a new mode to Overwatch. The yeah. mode that one the developers once upon a time said, doubt it would ever happen, but never say never. <laughs> because Overwatch is a team game mm-hmm. with, you know, classes... And it's structured in such a way that the objectives need you to work as a team. Yeah. While they said, fuck it, you all want a deathmatch, so here it comes. And it is free-for-all deathmatch. Are the maps the same? No. They made specific, small, arena-style deathmatch maps. Are they just smaller versions of current maps? Nope, they're brand new. Wow, that's impressive. So they only have one out right now, and it's like a castle on an island. That's pretty cool. Yeah, or it's a castle with a moat. That's still cool. Yeah, so you're basically going through the entire castle and stuff. Mm. Like, all the floors, the basement to the top floor. Uh, There's, like, balconies and whatnot that you can explore. And as you would expect, it's just a bunch of DPS heroes going at it. Because playing, like, Zenyatta is just not worth it. I'm gonna, listen, I'm gonna get back into Overwatch. Yeah. I'm gonna be Mercy Deathmatch. Oh, God. Champ. Oh, God. Mercy Deathmatch? Yeah. That sucks, because she doesn't have any mobility. Yeah, but. But what? That pistol. <laughs> no, you might, be, you might as well be D.Va. <laughs> At least have a mech. What about, like, uh, well, I guess Roadhog's not a threat anymore. Nope. Doomfist, Tracer. Doomfist is a fucking threat. Listen, he he's the big bad. He, Solo, took down the Overwatch. <laughs> I would hope he is a threat. So, as an aside, I was watching some breakdown videos of why, why Doomfist is so strong. Yeah. He... He fucking breaks physics. <laughs> okay. So when he punches, right? Yeah. He, he has a big arm. Mm-hmm. So when you hit someone, there's a big impact. Turns out the hitbox on his arm, like to hit someone, yeah. is twice as wide as his character model <laughs> and three times as tall as his character model. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, so you can aim to the right, to the left of someone, and your arm will connect at 100%. That's so stupid. So that's not that's not the dumb part. The dumb part is that the hitbox also extends out in front of his arm by a full arm length. Wait, what? He has yeah. double the arm? Like the yeah. force of his punch is sending out a shotgun? Yeah. Oh my so god. So he'll hit you. So he actually hits you before his arm physically He hits connects. you before he hits you. Yeah. It's stupid. It's so dumb <laughs> that if you hit a wall first and you're on the other side of that object or something... Yeah. He'll still hit you. Wait, the hitbox goes through the wall? Yes. It's <laughs> fucking broken. And now I'm just like, that's why it's so easy to kill someone with Doomfist. Does Overwatch have, like, in competitive, have, like, a ban? Pick no. Ban no. Thing? no. No? No. That's crazy. Yeah, it's... Oh, my God. It's so nuts. It's just like, what? <laughs> and, like, the cooldown is four seconds, so it's always up. Yeah. And you just punch and shit. They should at least make the... Ugh. At least make it so that you can't get hit through the wall. Like, like it's so it's it. I've seen a lot of Doomfists hit like you know like how there's uh, doors, right? Yeah. But like sometimes you hit the wall beside the door, yeah. and then I've seen a lot of Doomfists hit the door like that wall, yeah. and they'll hit the character that's on the other side. Oh my god! And it's just like whoa. <laughs> okay. Insta death. So he's one punch man. Yeah, it's it's crazy. That's dumb. Overwatch is dumb. But it's so good. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, and then I played a lot of, uh, what do you call it, uh, that Lucio Ball's out. Okay. 
They have a ranked version of that. <laughs> have you been playing ranked Lucio Ball? Yeah. I did my placements. I, okay. Uh, I did not do good. There's placements? Oh my... This is too much for me. I can't. Yeah. Go play Rocket League. <laughs> no, I did it. I did my 10 placements so I could get my spray. Oh, okay. If you get like a... I would have done it too if you yeah, get like a spray. you get like a spray and, a, and an icon and something. And okay. I'm like, okay, I'll do the 10 and then I'm out. So I did that. Uh, yeah, but that's Overwatch. That's the Overwatch minute. I mean, they have some balance changes. Widowmaker has basically... You know Hanzo's recon arrow? Yep. Widow has one of those now. What? Like a recon bullet? No, no. You know her, her venom mine? Yeah. If that touches you... Now she could see you through walls. Oh, that's pretty cool. So it's what fun. did it do before? It just like damage over time, like very oh. minimal. Oh, okay. Because like I always threw that out, and I would see it get triggered, but I don't know. Yeah, it does like fifty damage over time. You? Yeah. Okay. It never kills anybody. Uh, and then they lowered the cooldown on her hook. Oh, uh, okay. Because it was like twelve seconds. Now it's eight. I think it should be like one, but. To make her super mobile? Yeah. So she's always um, That'd be around. a nightmare on PC, though. <laughs> oh, just people, like... They'd be buying a commando. They'd be buying oh, a yeah. commando through everybody just doing headshots midair. It'd be nuts. Oh, but imagine that game? Oh, man. Yeah, if you want to watch a competitive <laughs> match of all... <laughs> maybe one Mercy and a bunch of Widowmakers. And oh, she would be so... Oh, man. Yeah. Just seeing a Mercy fly around yeah. with a Widowmaker. Yeah. Yeah. That's dumb. That's great. <laughs> You should not be on the balance team for this game. Yeah, the Mercy Maker combo. Yeah, <laughs> Mercy Maker. <laughs> oh, it's, and that oh, because you're putting you're putting people at their misery. Cause you're headshotting them. You're giving them mercy. Yeah, oh, that works on so many levels. Yeah, well, we'll keep it on the on the Blizzard front. <laughs> yeah, remember when uh, Blizzard tried tried to change Battle.net's name? Oh yeah, they tried to change the uh, Blizzard app. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they changed it again. They did a little bit of backtracking, and now it is called BlizzardBattle.net. So Battle.net. It's Battle.net. They okay. added Blizzard as a suffix, that or a prefix, that nobody's going to use. You know why they did that? Because they couldn't go back to Battle.net, or else they'd look completely stupid. Yeah, exactly. So there's, there's a quote going out. So uh, Blizzard, some from the PR team, I believe. Oh, quote, when we announced that we'd be transitioning away from the Battle.net name, to our online gaming service, we suspected that the shift could be challenging, end quote. Uh, new quote, we understood that Battle.net stood for something special. It represents years of shared history and enjoyment, community and friendship, and for all uh, for all of us and for all of our players, end quote. Uh, so did they not, like, of course it was going to be a hard transition. The game's been around forever, and like, I think <laughs> at this point, if they wanted to have their own, like, platform mm -hmm. they could have just called it battle.net it's a good name yeah it's a great name it's it's a good <laughs> name it's really it's one of the few things in video games that i think has like a really fantastic name that you're proud of you're proud of the battle.net no i i'm not proud of it. i didn't make it oh but it's just it's a good name like battle.net is a good name like i don't know think of it like though the playstation it's a box that you play things on it's i get it the yeah. Xbox. Yeah. That's a yeah. dumb. That doesn't mean anything. The PlayStation Vita. That's a dumb name. <laughs> no, <laughs> the, you're not for that. No, the Nintendo Wii. The Nintendo okay. Wii U. Okay. Right. Every, I don't know. The Atari Jet. No, the Atari Jaguar is a cool name. Uh. But yeah, I don't know. It's. I don't know why they would think they would need to change it. Like, I guess at some point they're like, okay, change is good, but mm -hmm. whatever. And then the last one, uh, it's just kind of a quick thing, is that apparently Platinum Games was on the verge of bankruptcy. They were? Yeah, so uh, uh, Platinum Games, surprised. Platinum Games, uh, they had a game with Microsoft called Scalebound. Yep. And the recent uh, cancellation of said game really put a strain on them. They were pretty much on the brink of bankruptcy, uh, as quoted by Hideki Kamiya, who works for... Uh, platinum games mm -hmm. but it turns out uh this was quoted or sorry this was a uh, tweet translated by, from neo gaff um it is hideki hideki kamiya tweeted ne quote near success has uh has to this point given platinum a new fan base a growing staff a brilliant success story and increased qualified job applicants it is a great benefit um Normally, I can't help but do everything myself. It's a pitiful story. But to say Yoko-san, Yoko Taro is the creator of Nier, 
Mm -hmm. uh, Yoko-san's save platinum would not be an exaggeration. I cannot thank him enough. Mm. So Nier has gone on, at least digitally, to sell around uh, 1.5 million copies, which is really good uh, for especially like a Yoko Taro game, which doesn't sell that much. Right. But Nier by itself has pulled platinum games from the brink, which is awesome to hear. Wow. So Surprising. I thought, I thought that was a, a cool little kind of pick-me-up story. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, it's been a pretty slow news week in the world of video games. Oh, that's a bummer. Unless you want to hear about hot memes. Mm, hit me with one. Uh, the new Crash Bandicoot meme. Oh, Whoa. yes. Whoa. Yeah, let's... Mm, <laughs> let's no. skip over that one. Is... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> memes are weird. Uh, but yeah, those are my picks. Okay. Yeah. I think that's it for the picks. Yeah, that's it. That's let's, all of let's talk about the weeks. You want to go or you want me to go? I, I can go for it. How many do you have? I have two things I have. I have one thing. Okay. All right. So, listen, I played Overwatch. That's great. I'm not going to talk about it. Oh, so you had two things I have. <laughs> I tricked you. Somber's great. Damn. And um, I also watched a movie. What movie was it? I watched Dunkirk. 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 Was it good? I fucking hated it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I, oh, all right. Why, okay. Why did you hate it? How, give me in, give me in your choice, either a word or a sentence. Okay. Why you hated it. Uh, fuck, man. Hmm. It's a sentence. Okay. It was too art it was too art oh <laughs> i think i gotta see this movie now because i think i'm gonna see it and come back and be like vince this movie Mwah. oh molto bene i understand the praise around this movie okay but it is totally the type of movie you watch and you're like masterpiece <laughs> masterpiece <laughs> people <without> bravo <laughs> bravo <laughs> Okay, all but right. But literally, this movie, nothing fucking happens. It's a collection of of really well shot and directed, even acted scenes. Okay. But it amounts to nothing. Are you saying this is, what is it, World War One or Two? this movie? Uh, I want to say one. One? Wait, 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 which one had the Spitfires? Were they throwing chains into people's turbines or propellers? Yeah, they didn't do any of that shit. Okay, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, let me put it this way. It's a war movie, uh -huh. but there's almost zero con... Like, you never see conflict. The movie doesn't have blood. What? Yeah. So, what this movie is about is all the hardship and struggle that the people take... Okay. ...when they're just... there. Like, when they're not... Like, civilians and... No, no, no. no. I mean, like, the soldiers. Like, oh. Like, the, the setting is... British and, and French forces are trapped on Dunkirk and they're surrounded by enemies on all sides. Yeah. And they're stuck there. And their their area and perimeter is slowly, slowly and smaller before they're gonna get shot down. Yeah. And they're waiting to get evacuated. Okay. Okay? It's a losing battle. And uh they're just showing like how the soldiers there are struggling with it. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh what? Like they show a lot of suicide, a lot of oh, what the fuck are we doing? That how desperate people are trying to be to to like even double cross their own out like friends mm. just to get so they can get off this island. Wow! And they show people in the Britain like the, the steps that they're going to take to try and help their boys and whatnot. Yeah, it's cool. Like, there's a lot of aspects about the movie that are really interesting. Like, there's zero female actors in this movie. Hmm. Like, it, it's all dudes, which makes sense because it's war. Yeah, and that's what it's about. And like back then, like that's the whole yeah. th that's the whole thing of like what's and, that poster? The, yeah, the girl with the yeah fist, for right? sure. So it's super cool that they they made that approach. The movie takes place like there's it takes place from three different story points. One is a uh, a dude on the ground, one is a civilian in a boat trying to get there, and With another his yeah, and another is uh Tom Hardy in an airplane. Okay. Uh the movie takes that 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 element of three different things and it tries to do some fancy non-chronological order of of showing the scenes to you. It amounts to nothing. Like does everything intersplice at some point? It, or are they just three separate stories? It does, but it doesn't matter. 
Hmm. Like the way that they feel when you see it, you'll be like, well, it's cool that they did that, but there's no reason to have done that. So the only way I can see this being like a nothing happens movie, having not seen it, is either A, literally nothing happens. Like the movie ends where in the same position that the movie began at is that, oh, here's all the hardships that we showed you. Okay, bye. We're not going to show you them getting rescued or killed or whatever. The other one is that it's just a straight dip down of depression. It's like, okay, we're in a shitty situation. It gets shittier, it gets shittier, it gets shittier. We're all dead. Mm. End of movie. Mm. Right? That's the only two ways I can think of it be like, have you, for you having that sort of reaction. Uh, no, maybe, maybe I'm presenting it wrong. It's not that nothing happens. It's just that. I don't know. It's just. Is it, is it a slice of life, but for war? Kind of. Huh. Like, it's like, oh yeah, we're going to get off this place. Eventually. Eventually. Let's just wa- let's just watch 140 minutes and then we'll get off this island. Huh. That, that sounds kind of boring. I thought it was boring. I think a lot of people might find it really interesting. But again, I feel like for the same reason I found Shin Godzilla boring. Okay. Is it probably the same reason why I find this boring? Mm. In that, like, it's a lot of just menial stuff is happening. See, I liked that about Shin Godzilla. The difference with Dunkirk is there's almost no dialogue. Okay. So, and it's not that, you know, you're going through... I guess Shin Godzilla is a bad example. Because Shin Godzilla is like a satirical piece on the inefficiency of the Japanese government. Yeah, or mm-hmm. it's a satirical piece on how hierarchies can work and so No, I'm just joking. I was going to say, <laughs> like, are you being serious? Yeah, no. 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 Uh, yeah, I mean, fuck. Like, and it's... it. I guess it's also interesting in that, you know, this movie kind of shows, uh, you know, it's definitely, you know, the victor's, the victor's right history. Okay. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah, history is... History is... History, and, and, like, this movie is all about that. And it's like... Because what happens, and you're like, oh, huh. And, I don't know. I thought it was super boring. Hmm. This kind of, like, for you having that extreme reaction, yeah. it kind of makes me want to... Watch it. Want to watch it. You should watch it. Because, I know, I, know I know we're friends, but sometimes we have very differing opinions on things. Some would say one is right and one is wrong. Uh, yeah, like, Anthony's was right, and then... <laughs> the majority would, would never agree with that. Yeah. Case in point, Super Mario World versus Super Mario 3. Yeah, you're right. Super Mario World is... The, the better wor- one, no, yes. the worst one. Yeah, Super Mario 3 is fantastic. Um... But yeah, I think uh, I'm kind of intrigued. I kind of want to watch this movie now. Yeah. All right. That's that, that's kind of I don't know. It's weird. It's kind of anticlimactic that you bring that up like that. But yeah, it looked like the trailers made it look like it didn't really tell you a lot, but it made it look cool, right? It but doesn't look. That's cool. what it seems like. The I'll tell you what. I loved the color correction on this film. Okay. And and like a lot of the not necessarily. The stuff that happens, but just the look of this movie, yeah. I really enjoyed. Okay, uh, it's got this. It's, isn't it? Wasn't it filmed on actual film? Yeah, on on IMAX film. Yeah, uh, but it's what he's applied to, like in the in the post processing that made, like it's this weird cross between like a sepia to- like a sepia tone and yet still being uh, like high dynamic range in terms of its co- color okay. spectrum. That sounds. It cool. looks cool, uh, but it doesn't feel like super. Artificial. Like, could you get a lot of cool wallpapers out of this movie? Probably. Okay. Yeah, you probably could. All right. Yeah. Like, it's a movie where I can see the craftsmanship, and it's definitely all... People put a lot of work, and it look, and it, it shows. Yeah. I, but I think me just being a little too simple-minded, I didn't get it. And I didn't fucking care. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you go for the self-depreciation. like depreciation, or That's like, the only thing I can think of. I'm like, because everyone seems to enjoy it, and I couldn't figure out why I didn't like it. And I'm just like... It's too fucking artsy. You're like, maybe I'm not art enough. Yeah, and I all. think that's it. That's it. It's gotta be it. Okay. Uh, my week, it's it's kind of short. So I've been, actually, I've been reading a book. Uh, it's Say called... What? Uh, <laughs> actually, I forgot the book title. I'm gonna switch. Alright. Alright, I went to a game show. Uh, I went to uh, the Barry Game Exchange in Barry, Ontario. You drove all the way out to Barry? I drove all the way out to Barry. <laughs> Sunday? Uh, yep. Okay. And so it was a four-hour event. Okay. <laughs> from noon to four. And pretty much it was just a... It t- took place in, in, like, this rec center. 
and it was like over 130 uh, vendors? vendors and they're all selling games and you can go there and trade with people and it's like a big gathering right yeah. for collectors and stuff and so cool? i went uh there's a lot there's a lot of good stuff yeah things i can afford no oh right like yo you want you know, i saw at least four copies of earthbound complete inbox Ooh. guess how much uh earthbound complete in at a convention at a convention 300 <laughs> <laughs> Add a thousand to that. Okay. Twelve hundred dollars. Damn. Uh, Did they take PayPal? It's, no, it's all cash. What? They didn't yeah. take Square? There was one person I asked. I'm like, do you have like Square or anything? And they're like, you're the first person to ask me about Square in like two years. So oh. sorry, I don't have the app anymore. And I'm like, okay. Uh, but I saw like a couple games I, I wanted to find. Uh, but what what it seemed like is the people there were charging. What it would be on eBay plus shipping. That's how it works. Right? And so it's like, I'm the fact that I'm here means I shouldn't have to pay the shipping. Uh huh. Uh, but it that kind of sucked. So, uh-huh. especially like if I wanted rarer stuff, I think it would have been better. Like if I came up, if I came to that show with like 500 bucks and I was like, I'm just going to drop it on some like complete in box shit and just, I'm sure I could wiggle in some deals. Right. But pretty much what I, I went there for is I was looking for some kind of weird. Uh, like, not so expensive games, but just hard to find. So I found, uh, for some reason, it's been really hard for me to find is NBA Street Volume Two, for the PS2? PS2, but the black label, oh. not not the not the oh. greatest hits. Okay. For some reason, it's been really hard to find for me. And I found it there; it was like five bucks. Uh, but the one I found that I'm probably uh, most excited about mm? is I found a Wu Tang Shaolin style. For the oh, PS One, no. the Wu Tang Clan fighting game. I've only ever played a burned copy of that. Yeah, I I found it. Complete inbox. The wow. it's all mint. Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, for those who don't know, Wu Tang Shaolin style is a game. It's a fighting game where you play members of the Wu Tang Clan and you do some brutal shit. And you do some brutal shit and you try to go through the thirty six chambers. The thirty six chambers of death. Right. It's just a square box. Yeah. So it's uh. <laughs> That game, wow. That game is something special. It's one of those games where uh, video games used to be weird in a way that, like, you know, that there's B-movies. Like, how, did game, how did that game get made? I don't know. It's, oh, it's so good. I, I was just happy to find it. Wow. And then uh, the, the thing I want to talk about, though, is I don't know if you experience this in the toy community, mm-hmm. um, but trading... <gasps> or selling your goods yeah. for someone else's goods yeah. is a fucking nightmare in the video game. Of course, hobby world. it's nightmare everywhere. Is it okay? So I'm trying. I uh, I'll give you an example. I brought some NES games. Uh-huh. I brought uh, the 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 ones that people were most interested in was Final Fantasy One and Mega Man Two. Yeah, for the NES. Uh, so I brought those because I had some doubles. I go to the vendors. I'm like, okay, I know Mega Man Two is worth around. 50 bucks on eBay. I don't expect to get 50. Uh, I'll probably go to like 35, 40. Yeah. Right? So I go up to tables and I was like, okay, hey, look, uh, like they got Goemon for the the N64. Right? Yeah. I like that game, but it's a $70 cart. Wow. I don't want to spend 70 So I'm like, hey, I'll, I'll, if you want to trade, I'll do Mega Man 2. Uh, if you take like thirty five bucks off of the yeah. off of the cart, he's like thirty five bucks. I don't know. I'll give you. You trade me, I'll take fifteen dollars off the cart. It's like they're trying to lowball so hard that it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I had one person offer me twenty dollars for Mega Man Two, Final Fantasy One, Super Mario Three with a manual, and Doctor Mario. Hmm. And he was only going to give me $20 for all four of those games. Wow. Uh, so I don't know if it's that bad in toys. It is. I mean. Okay. But like, holy crap. It made me never want to try and sell any of my stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> Selling to a dealer is tough. No, but the thing is, is like, so I knew the stores were going to lowball me. Yeah. But a lot of the vendors there are just collectors. Oh, yeah, I know. But I mean, but they're also, it. they're technically a dealer in that situation. And yeah. Selling to a dealer is always tough. It's man, it was it was a nightmare scenario. Yeah. Uh yeah, it's that sucked. Mm. But it was cool to see I've never been to like a truly collector event like this. Yeah. Uh it's always been like, oh, this is the anime convention and video games here. Oh, this yeah. is the toy convention with video games here. Uh the amount of like stuff 
people sell. Mm. Uh, like, you wouldn't think, like, oh, you just want manuals? Here's the box of manual, loose manuals I have. Like, you want to get the manual for this game and that game to finish your complete inbox? Like, there was a dude who was just selling boxes. Yeah. Like, he's like, I, I uh, collect the games. But when I was a kid, I didn't, like, want, use the boxes, right? So I just folded them up, packed them away. And so now he's selling all of his boxes. And you can just buy, like, the GoldenEye box. It's mint, crazy. Right? It's pretty cool. Uh, just to Just to see that side of it there are though also in this situation i have i met a bunch of people who uh are collectors not for the fact that they like the game but for the fact that it's rare so i saw someone drop um i think it's a game called restaurant panic it's it's some restaurant game for the nes it's really rare but i saw someone drop like 1700 dollars on a complete inbox game and i'm like oh cool like that's you must really like that game and they're like no, it's, it's just a pretty decent price, and I want it. Yeah. Right? And I'm just like, you don't want to, like, play it, or you don't want to, like, open it or whatever. Like, no, it's just going to sit on my shelf. And I'm like, that doesn't that doesn't make any sense to me. Mm. <laughs> Why would you do that? Why would you go through all that trouble? Mm. Uh, that's, so, uh, yeah. that's the equivalent of a mint in sealed box collector in the toy world. Yeah, pretty much, I guess. Right? You know, you just buy that shit. It's packaged up. What are you going to do with it? Fucking pin it to my wall. Why? <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, that's a thing that's going on. Uh, it, it was fun. I don't know. Yeah. I liked it. Uh, so the book I I was reading it's by Hirohiko Hirohiko Araki, uh, the JoJo Bizarre Adventure creator. It is called Manga in Theory and Practice. Uh, so pretty much what it is, it, it's an actual book book, not a like a manga. A book book. Yeah, it's a book book. Oh okay. And. Uh, that's it's new. it's his uh, pretty much guidelines to creating a successful manga, manga series oh, okay. or manga, and like the the s- things he's learned in his career, what he truly believes is what he calls the golden path to uh, to making a successful manga, and stuff he likes and doesn't like in creating stories and mm-hmm. art and stuff like that. It's I'm not looking I'm not reading it because I'm interested in like creating my own stories or anything. I'm more interested in just like. An ex- a proven expert's mindset uh, when trying to create a new franchise or mm. think of character stuff. And the lengths this guy goes through to uh, to just create a character. Like, he creates pretty much, like, he has enough information to create a legitimate government ID mm. for his characters. He's got character sheets that have, like, birth dates, uh, uh, birth dates, height, weight, blood type, uh, astrological signs... Uh, stuff that happened to them as a child, even though like they wouldn't, like the reader wouldn't ever know about that kind of stuff because it's it's just stuff that will shape this character to make it easier for him to write or draw or whatever. Right. Um, there, there's other things in stories where he says like the key to a successful shonen story is to always have a steady flow, either it being positive or negative. Uh, zombie shows are are an example of of a negative flow where. Yeah. It starts off bad, but the stories are always a decline. It's like, it's worse, it's worse, it's worse, mm-hmm. it sucks, it sucks, right? The, the Walking Dead is a great example of that. Uh, or he says in, in in some, like, older manga series where the, the hero starts off kind of in a, in a certain place and gets stronger and stronger yeah. and stronger and stronger, right? And that's, that's a good arc. And what he says is that when you try and backtrack or you try and dip, like, so the reason I dropped off of Bleach was because Ichigo lost all of his powers, right? Yeah. Uh, but they didn't end the series. They just continued it. And that's what lost me. He explained that. But when he explained it, it's like, oh, that is why I didn't like that part in Bleach. Because they did. They tried to do a backtrack and put the main character back to a, a, a place he was in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Right? And it's just a really interesting read to try and, like, seeing someone who's an expert break down into little tiny chunks of what really creates a, a good series. So it's a pretty interesting read. It's kind of hard to find. I had to order it online through the chapters website. Like none of the stores actually carried it. Oh. So if you maybe if you have like an anime store or like a like a hobby shop near your place, mm-hmm. uh, you can find it there. But I think it's a, it's a really good read. Cool. And then the last thing I did is I finished near Automata. Sure did. Uh, I got endings A, B, C, D, and E. Those are those the six are, main. Those, those are the those are the main endings. Okay, five main. Okay, five. Yeah. Uh, there are still an, an ending for each other letter of the alphabet 
And I got a couple of those, but they're fine. But this game is really good. I've heard. Uh, it's depressing. <laughs> it's really depressing. Uh, the game does the whole anime thing of... Especially for people who are maybe reading shonen manga or watching shonen series of, of build up. Build up is a thing in those kind of genres where it makes... Sometimes anime builds up too much, right? I would say more often than not. More often than not, anime builds up too much. But this video game takes the uh, that same approach. It takes about till the end of the second playthrough for shit to start popping off. And Whoa. yeah, right? Okay. And so like playing through A, you're like, okay, this is like a pretty decent character action game. This is cool. And it's got some weird ph- philosophical elements. Then playing through the second option, you're like, okay, this is like, they're adding on layers. They're doing something else, right? And then f- when you end the second one and start the third yeah. playthrough, that's when stuff starts to pop off. And you're like, okay, everything is fucked. Everything is depressing. Everything is crazy. And I, the thing is, is like that buildup of the first two playthroughs really made that next yeah. playthrough more impactful. But I don't know if it needed that much buildup. Yeah. It was 20 hours of buildup. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> it's a long time. That's a bit... That's like telling me... Or that's like me telling, hey, Anthony, yeah. I'll watch this show. Okay. You gotta get through the first 20 episodes, <laughs> and then it gets good. And then it gets really good. Yeah. Well, listen, you, didn't you watch Smallville? I did. And you're like, look, the first nine seasons? <laughs> ah, the 10th season, though. <laughs> right? That's, yeah. Yeah. So, it, it kind of suffers from that, and it would be a, a, a shame, I think, if people started playing this and then didn't kind of see it all the way through i see i get the sense that everyone's playing this game they beat the first time they get half through the second run and they're like i've seen it yeah but the thing is like they haven't yeah right uh there's also like a really funny thing when you beat the the first ending there's a message that appears on the screen it's like hey um when you get to the main menu you should probably go to continue and load your save again like just do it my signed square enix pr team oh wow (laughs) See, as cool as, like, I like that idea, that's also, like, man, that idea is so, like, what a double-edged sword that is, right? Yeah. The minute you put up the credits, a lot of people check out. Yeah. Like... 100%. I I used to, when I was a kid, watch the credits, like, and just wait, but now when credits roll, I just fucking turn it off. The thing is, is the credits... Games are made by so many people now yeah. that they're long. Yeah, and I right? just... I would just shut that shit off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so... I've gotten to the point where they have given me the option to erase all my data to do a thing. Mm. Uh, Are you going to do I'm going to do it eventually, but I want to go through all the side stuff. I'm going to get as many trophies the legitimate way. Just buy them and end it. They're so expensive. Just end it. I'm going to get as many trophies as I can the legitimate way. Just end it. And... Then I'm gonna go and be like, okay, I don't want to collect. Just all the buy fish. the platinum. No, I want to see all the the optional bosses. There's a the thing about this game that's uh, also awesome that I love about Japanese games in general is that it's got a lot of side stuff and a lot of optional stuff. Okay, right. There's a bunch of optional bosses that are hidden around the world. Uh, if you have gotten that DLC that came out, uh, those got some <laughs> fucking crazy optional bosses. Yeah. Uh, and there's a, there's still a lot to explore in the world and and do different quests and stuff. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I like is that after you beat like the fourth ending or whatever, uh, you get a chapter select, mm. so you can go through any of the chapters right, and, right. and pick up any quests you missed. Uh, they have a debug mode. Oh, really? Yeah. So once you once you activate debug mode, you activate like almost like a developer console, and you can just place enemies in places. You can set their levels. You can oh, set what weapons they have. You can set your stuff. It's really cool. Uh, and but the thing is, you can't save. Oh, so, I imagine yeah, you can. As soon as you hit the debug mode, you can't it's save. Like, turn on cheat mode and then... Pretty yeah. much. And it's it's a really cool option. They give you a lot of cool stuff to play around with after the fact. Wow. Right? It's it's a it's a fantastic game. Hmm. I really like it. Uh, the only question I have for you is, which is better, this or Horizon? This or Horizon? Yeah. I think Horizon's better. Oh, yeah? You think yeah. so? But you still think Zelda's better than both of them? I still think Zelda's better than both so of them. that's still the runner for the top? Zelda's insane. Zelda's I still position. can't get over how amazing that game is. Yeah, the game's pretty good, man. 
Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I do think, though, that Nier is better than Persona 5. Oh! <laughs> so you think Persona is worse than Nier, worse than Horizon, and worse, worse than, than Zelda. Th- and worse than Zelda. Wow, bombs are being dropped. Dun, here. dun, dun. Wow. wow. So, yeah. I, I think I'm at, for brand new games, yeah. I'm in... I have, like, eight or nine yeah. I've beaten so far mm-hmm. this year. Uh, I don't know. Wolfenstein's coming. I'm going to play that. And some other stuff's coming out. Does Night Trap count? Night Trap got that? I guess... Can I put Night Trap on the list? Sure. It's remastered, (laughs) so I guess technically it counts. Yeah, true. Um, But yeah, so... The game's really good. Nier is really good. Persona's also really good. I just don't think it's better than Nier. Yeah, well... (laughs) I've got no opinion on the matter. Okay. Great. 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 (laughs) Great. Wow. I, I'm just trying to think if I've beaten a game this year. No, I forgot. I beat Zelda. Did you? Yeah. I didn't get. I didn't get all of the shrine. Neither did I. But I legit beat that game. Okay. That's like fair. I, like I put ninety hours into that. Did we talk about? Yeah, we had a we had, we like had a the, big one. Yeah, that's like the only game I finished this year. Oh, that's crazy. Gross. I guess yeah, that was in pole position for me considering it's the only game I finished. What else have you been playing this year that you haven't finished? Overwatch. You can't finish that. Yes, and, you can. And also, it came out last year. <laughs> it's called Five Star Gold. What, what's Five Star Gold? You know, when you rank up, you get a star beside your name. Yeah. After five stars, you go from bronze to silver. Five silvers, you go to gold. Oh my god! I'm at five bronze. I think. How long does that take? You are. You're only at. All right. So here are the games I've played this year. Mm. Yakuza Zero. Yeah, it's not gonna. Nope. Kingdom Hearts 0.2, a fragmentary pack. That's not even a game, so whatever. You played it. Zelda, Persona 5, Neo. You beat that? I didn't beat it. Oh, okay. But I played it. These are games I've played, not beat. Okay. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. All right. Puyo Puyo Tetris. Uh, And Nier Automata. Okay. Or Nier Automata. Mm. And I played a bunch of games that came out last year. Shovel Knight. I beat beat Shovel Knight, beat Res Infinite, Dragon Guard 3, Mm. Syndicate. Final, I haven't beat Final Fantasy IX, but I'm playing it. Super hot. Played that Dead Rising remake. Yeah. Uh, I gotta beat. Oh, you know what I'm gonna play next? Undertale. Oh yeah, I, mm, that game came out last year too. Yeah, but it's on PS4 now, and now I'm gonna be play it. Yeah, I should pre-order that physical edition. Okay. It comes with a locket. Great. <laughs> great. Great. Oh, that was the crazy thing I saw at the at the game convention thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I buy the physical copies from a, a place called Limited Run Games. Yes. Right. And I've actually been really lucky these past two weeks. These past two weeks, they brought out Night Trap and they brought out uh, Wonder Boy, a dragon trap. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like an old Sega Master System game. Okay. They remastered it. And those games sold out in maybe 45 seconds. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. The special editions. Wow. I got both. Wow. I'm Hoping for a low number. I'm hoping for that individually boxed number one. That'd be pretty great. You'll never get one. <laughs> You'll never get the first nine. Really? You'll never get Why? Because they're always... Because the, the single digit ones are always reserved for people in the know. Ah, uh, true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, ten. Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, I'll yeah. get ten. So, yeah, I, I got those. But, um... Where was I going with this? What was I talking about? I don't know, limited run, you're lucky, you're awesome. No, but before... Oh, sorry, yeah, the, the game show. Those limited run editions of games sell for so much at the, these conventions. Yeah. Like, oh my god. Their, uh, their Vita games and their PlayStation 4 games normally sell for $25 to $35 yeah. US. People are sell- reselling those games opened for... Eighty dollars, ninety dollars. It's insane. Yeah, it makes sense. It's crazy. It's a one-time production run. I it just is, got. Yeah. I just got this new action figure, which I fucking hate. Okay, but I'm gonna fucking sell it because it goes for like two hundred bucks and it costs forty. Dang. So, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Thank you, Kickstarter. But yeah, I was thinking, like, I was telling people, like, oh, they're like, I heard some, overheard some people being like, oh, yeah, like, I want to get these two things, and I didn't get them. And I was like, oh, yeah, I ended up getting them. They're like, oh, are you gonna, what are you gonna do with them? I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play them. And they looked at me like I had two heads. Mm. <laughs> like, they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna open it. 
I'm going to put the disc in. I'm going to play the game. I'm going to put it on a shelf. Yeah. It's going to be great. And they're like, you're not going to like keep it sealed? You're not going to resell it? Like, no. I bought it to play it. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen a group of people look so shocked. Well, that's what the high end of any collector hobby looks like, right? Yeah. You go to car collectors. You're going to drive it? You're Why? Drive that car? Why? Keep it no. in your driveway. Just Fuck. wash it. Wash it forever. You put gas in there? <laughs> the gas corrodes, <laughs> man. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Right. So, any any, any hobbies like that? You eat. You eat in that car. <laughs> yeah. You know. You gonna roll on those tires? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I guess. Like, yeah. I don't know. This is coming to the thing where like I like the hobby a lot, but it's like maybe the people in it I don't like as much. Uh, uh, again. And there are good people. Like this. Obviously, I can't judge a whole community by a few people. I mean, you can. I could. Yeah. Like, I could be like, you know how that one guy made a joke at the toy convention about the next time it should be sponsored by Old Spice? Yeah. Next time that game convention should be sponsored by Old Spice. Ah, yes, yes. I have never seen such equal opportunity, or smelled such equal opportunity stink. Yeah. Like, both the men and the women at that place. Yeah. Like, yo. Well, what happens when you, you know, stay at home and play games all day? That's what I do. Yeah. But I take a shower. You say you do. (laughs) (laughs) I've never seen it. Yes, you have. No, I've never seen it. We went it. camping before. I, I, I never seen it. All anything. right, fine. Didn't see shit. All right. Uh, and uh, oh, speaking of camping, so I went to not really the same thing, but I went to the beach. It's, it's like camping, I guess. Kinda, yeah, I went on the windiest day possible. Okay, good choice. Good choice. <laughs> the waves, man. That sounds great. Oh, it was so much fun. Uh, cause you know, I like, go to the beach and you just wade in the water, and you're like, oh, this is nice. This is okay. <laughs> Man, when those waves are coming at you yeah, all the time, time, you're just like, "Fuck, this is an experience. Yeah. This is a workout." You go, you go in deep. Yeah, and then and then you let your mind slip for a second, and then one crashes into your face. Yeah, like you think you're in a spot where the waves aren't breaking. <laughs> yeah, and then that one wave breaks. It's like, <sighs> it takes you under. Yeah, it's great. And then you're like drowning for five seconds, and then you're like, "Oh, I'm dead." Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then you stand up, and you're like, "Oh, oh no, okay, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I can hit." Yeah, yeah. it's good right. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, let's uh, let's round it out with Common Rider. Yeah, we had one episode this one week. One episode. Uh, where did it leave off? The game, game Deus. So game just showed up. Yeah. And then just was like everyone's infected. <laughs> he just AOE <laughs> blasted all of Japan. Yeah, that's what happened. And every yeah, everyone's infected. Uh, they're all in the hospital, and everyone's yeah. like, "There's too many patients. We don't yeah. have we don't have the the utilities. We don't have the personnel to handle all these sick people." Yeah. And uh, when, as soon as that was said, M and uh, Eric, was, no, it was M, only M went to this, right? M was just like, okay, I'm a doctor, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm going to leave. I'm yeah. going to go fight people in yeah. my sick yeah. mode. Yeah. And then also uh, Paradox, Paradox is well, going to come with them, with we're me. like, oh, well, if you're fine, I'm going to Yeah, fight. we're bros now. We're going to come with you. This is co-op only. <laughs> So yeah, they go to go, they go to fight Game Deus. Mm. Um, but in the meantime, Laser and Shin Dan Kuroda mm. is they're like they get into a fight, and they're like, "We're gonna go to a stage, and we're just gonna fight forever until you run out of lives." Yeah. And at first, it seems like uh, Laser is taking out his grudge. Yeah. Right. But then you realize that what it is it's it's them fighting and infecting each other with the game Deus virus over and over and over again yeah. so they can figure out how to overcome it yeah right uh which i thought was pretty cool yeah. cuz it actually threw me for it actually threw me for a second i was like are they going to just like kill each other like what's going on? oh it's one of those battles it's one of these things yeah right? yeah so i thought that was pretty cool mm mm-hmm. uh, what would you think about like the rest of it yeah, so uh, Dan eventually, after losing ninety five lives, yeah, uh, his antibodies finally kick in, and mm-hmm. it's like, okay, we can now, we are now immune to the virus, and I can create a thing. Yeah, yeah. And so he goes and he he, he creates his new immunity attack gashat mm-hmm. called Mighty Doctor Double X, which is like anticlimactic and both also make sense. Yeah. I think the shitty part is is um, they haven't they eventually give it to M. Yeah. M puts it in his sword and it's just an attack. Yeah, and it's not a suit. Yeah, and it's like oh oh, okay. and then then once he has it in the sword, just 
cuts game just and game just goes down. Yeah. And then uh, what's his face shows up? Kronos. Yeah, Kronos shows up. Yeah. He Fucking just, time kicks it. He ta- like I wanted the time kick to come back. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think he time kick him. Time kick the villain. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He time kicks uh, Game Dias. Yeah. And then absorbs his soul. Yeah. And yo, he is now a bugster. Yeah. He puts. He absorbs it and he shoves it into his body. He infects himself. He's like, I am no longer human. I have surpassed humanity. Yeah. <laughs> classic villain line. Yeah, exactly. No, the classic video game line is he's like, I am the li- the final true boss. Yeah, I am the final true boss. Yeah. 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 And I'm just like, oh, fuck, this is a video game. That's hilarious. <laughs> it's also a kid show. God damn <laughs> yeah. it. Uh, but that's that's pretty cool. They showed clips of his new suit in the pre- episode preview. Yep. Yeah. It's Kronos, but it's all like de- palette swap pretty much, like yeah. player two Kronos. Yeah. Uh, I think it looks pretty cool. I think it looks better than this green one. Yeah. How many episodes do you think we got left? Well, I looked it up on Wiki. It says 45 episodes. Oh. This was episode 42. All right. Three so more we're running there. So, well, well, here's the thing. I think the show might actually end at 44, and then the last episode will be some sort of stupid bullshit, like... Friendship recap? Yeah, or, oh, let's introduce the new writer early. Okay, yeah. And it's just like, ah, what a waste. What a waste. What if the new writer is cool? Comrade Build? Yeah. He looks like the... He looks like uh, Neo Double. Okay. Like the half and half. Yeah, I'm down with that. He does that exact gimmick. So does, does he have a partner? I don't think so. No, because my favorite thing about Double oh, yeah, was right. that when one person becomes a comrade, the other guy just passes the fuck out. <laughs> what I loved about that, but about Double's uh, two riders, is that one just had a completely Western name. Oh yeah, one was like Shotaro, and then was like Philip. Philip, <laughs> yeah, the model. Yeah, yeah, Shotaro and Philip. Oh yeah, they're two sides. They're east and west. <laughs> the duality is a real Vince. And then the one guy just fucking passes <laughs> in. <laughs> <laughs> so the girl drags his body. Oh, I gotta rewatch Double. That's so good. Yeah, Double's great. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of down for those episodes. Like I was really excited when they introduced Wizard early in Forze. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean, like, I'll watch it because it's part of the series, but it just, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, the series actually ends here. Yeah. And then you've overstayed your welcome with this extra episode. Mm-hmm. I was, this, uh, this show is actually, now that we're near the end, it's surprisingly light on, like, personal, like, personality building episodes. Yeah. Like, we, hey, we're just people, and here's an episode that's just us hanging out and yeah. doing stuff, right? surprisingly light on that yeah but i remember that from the beginning like this we were like this show is they just fucking jump into battle like every two yeah, seconds this show's just moving and yeah. it it doesn't stop i yeah. think the amount of like story arcs and twists that have happened in the show yeah. is like the equivalent of like maybe three common writers yeah but there you have it yeah i like this new episode it's good yeah it was, it was cool it's good neat someone needs to die <laughs> I don't know who yet, but someone needs to die. So. I bet it's I bet it's paradox. Yeah, I mean you're They right. came to conclusions and they're like, Oh, we we're gonna be best buds forever now, and now that we're best buds, I will die for you. Like I reached max social link with you. We are bros. Oh, you think he's gonna die in the final battle? Yeah, like he's gonna take a time kick Shit. in the most uh, opportune time for then M to be yeah, like, that but it's gonna be a thing where like he's taking the kick, but he's holding it back, and he's like, mm. M, you gotta, oh you, you have to do this now. Forget me, mm. live on. Blah, blah. I enjoyed playing with you. Uh huh. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> Damn. Damn. I was kind of hoping, like, after they beat the final boss, M turns around and is like, showtime. Showtime. Uh, maybe. And, or, like, a new challenger approaches, and then, like, he just fucking takes him out. Yeah, I can see that. But that probably wouldn't be a good message to send the kids off on. No, because... <laughs> to backstab your best yeah, friend. Yeah, to backstab your best bud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that probably wouldn't work. So, so yeah, I think it's going to be the whole, like, we're buds now, and, like, I'm sorry for doing all that wrong to you and killing your friend. Yeah, and blah, okay. blah, blah. Yeah. All right. That's boring. <laughs> it's a kid <laughs> show what do you want yeah I guess so uh, but that's it for this week yeah for sure uh, next week we will talk about more stuff will we yeah okay I think so alright I don't think we have a choice maybe see you then alright bye